fellow quarry crafters, especially those of you from the Mount Lupus community. Uh, Diorama here with another video and today I wanted to introduce our smelter, show you around a bit and especially how to use it and how to do a little bit of troubleshooting if there are any problems. So let's get into it. The smelter is found just below the wall in the back left of the community and if we head in you can see on the left hand side here is the input area and the output collection area. At the back you have your fuel management uh, section and a maintenance hatch and then over on the right you have an array of furnaces that could be used for smaller uh, smelting jobs. The first thing that I think is worth mentioning is that this smelter array is designed for larger jobs. So you must use full stacks of items that you want to be smelted and you need to use multiples of five stacks in order to get it smelting. Okay, so if you try and use only four stacks, the smelter won't start. They don't have to be all the same item, um, but you'll find that that will work better a little bit more about that later on. So to start off with, I thought I would do a quick run through of how to use the smelter. So I've got here a shulker box with some cobble and some, well, I've already smelted some stone as well. So the way that I find it easiest to use this is I take the shulker box, place it on this hopper, take out the items that I want to smelt, and then head over to this chest. I'm going to put in five stacks of cobble for now. And then we just have to wait for a second for all of those to filter through and the furnace will kick into action and we'll be able to collect our goods in just a few moments. Right, so the furnace array has been running for a while now. So if we go over and look in this shulker box, we should be able to see, yep, yeah, we're just cutting the uh, fourth stack through now. And then very shortly, we should get the fifth and final stack come through. So you can see now the kind of rates that you can expect. Um, this has been running for maybe two minutes. Um, and it's giving us all five stacks that we put in. So it's pretty quick. Um, you probably don't want to be waiting around for the whole thing to, to go through, but it will run without you being here. So feel free to go off and do something else as long as the smelter is loaded. Right, so we've got our five stacks. Now all we need to do, break the shulker, and we're off on our way. But diorama, I hear you cry or maybe it's the voices in my head, how do I actually get fuel into the system? Don't worry, we've got you covered. If you come to the back here, you've got the fuel management area. So this box here is connected up to our kelp farm. If we take out five stacks of, that's four, can't count. I need to do counting with Avo a bit more. Five stacks of kelp, wander over to the smelting system and chuck it in. The same process will go through again. Just wait for a second and all your fuel will wind up over on the left hand side. Okay, so once that's finished running, you can come in, click on this hopper, or if you've put a shulker or a chest at the bottom, you can click on that. Grab out your kelp and head over to the back here where we've got a chest set up. If we right click on this, we can create our kelp blocks. This goes into the fuel input chest, so throw it in there. Wait a second for that to filter down, and then when you're ready, press the button. So you'll hear a minecart being launched, and you'll see this redstone lamp will flash on and off. You'll also hear a piston noise. Um, well, whilst that's loading, this will flash until it's eventually, at some point, this redstone lamp will stay on. At that point, the system is full. Um, please don't put any more fuel in, otherwise the system will back up and what will happen is it will have a minecart running backwards and forwards 
uh, all the time, uh, which firstly can cause lag and secondly um, can mean that if we unload the chunks, we cause problems with the system. So once this light's on, please don't put any more fuel into the system, especially don't press this button. Right, so actually, in terms of what you need to be able to use the system, we're pretty much done. You can put your goods in, take them out, you can load up the fuel if you've run out. For most people, that's all you're gonna to need to do. However, stick around and I'll tell you a little bit about how it works and also how to do a little bit of troubleshooting, which you will probably need. Now, no system is perfect and so sometimes things will go wrong. Say for example, you come over here, you put in your five stacks of cobblestone that you want to smelt, you wait around and nothing happens. There are a couple of things that you can check. So here we have a maintenance hatch. The first thing I would suggest, if you jump down here, you can see this hopper minecart. You right click, right, we can see in this hopper minecart we have a part stack. What that means is that this hopper minecart will not launch. Okay, this will, the hopper minecart will only launch with five full stacks of items. They could be different items, but they need to be full stacks. So if we take this one out and wait for a second for that to fill up, I'll just help it along here with uh, by taking some of the items out of the chest. Once it's full, now it can take off and you're back to smelting. Now, if we come back down to the bottom here, under the furnaces at the back, you'll see a lever. When this lever is in the upright position, it deactivates these repeaters, turning on the redstone torches. And that means we can actually remove items from the furnace and gain the XP. So if I put, my, if I put this shovel in my hand and grab out this stone, you'll see that it starts to get repaired. If I take out from the next one, it repairs a little bit more. If I take off my armor, it'll work even better, so take it off, and you can see my shovel is now fully repaired. I recommend not always just starting all the way from the left, because if everyone does that, these first few furnaces are going to end up with no XP, and the ones at the end will end up with <laughs> loads of XP, so just, vary where you take the XP from, uh, and try not to use all the furnaces, just use what you need in order to repair your tools. When you're done claiming your XP, flick the lever again, and that will unlock all of these hoppers. The items will then get pushed through and will end up in a dispenser, around, a dropper around the back, which pushes it up to the collection area. Now what if you've checked the mob and mine cart, it's running round, but you're still not getting your items um, up the top. Well, you've probably worked out already that that's most likely to be someone has left the lever here in the upward position. So all you need to do is simply come down, flick it to the down position, and then your items should start going up. You should start hearing a clicking from the dropper, and that means everything's working again. Other than that, the only other thing that could go wrong is if there's no fuel in the furnace. So have a quick check. If there's no fuel in the furnace, you'll have to manually smelt up a little bit of kelp to make some kelp blocks and feed them into, this, into the array through the fuel input. That's very unlikely to happen because each furnace holds 64 fuel blocks and when the light's off, I usually come by and just put a little bit of uh, extra fuel in so that the system is always going to have at least 64, or at least 65, I should say, uh, kelp blocks in each of the furnaces. 20 times 65 is maths you can do yourself because I can't be bothered. Um, but that's a lot of items. So it should be pretty unlikely that you'll be running out of fuel. And for those of you who are interested, I'm gonna take you through very quickly just the redstone behind how the smelter works. It's based on a design that I saw um, Cubfan135 use. Um, he used it for his 
kelp auto spelter farm thing uh, on the Hermitcraft server. I haven't, I've deliberately not hooked ours up to automatically smelt the kelp because if we constantly have things like that running, we're going to end up causing lag, which is going to cause problems for the other players on the server. Um, so we've got manual kelp smelting, but this design works quite nicely for bulk smelting of items. So I decided to install it. So come with me down the maintenance hatch. And if we just take this first tunnel on the right, here you'll see the fuel input lines. Um, so this redstone just goes up to the button on the wall and that will launch this, um, this minecart. The minecart then will run over the fuel input hoppers at the back here. Each time it passes here, if there's something in it, this will reactivate the uh, rail here with a small delay uh, and that will send the, the minecart off again. If on the other hand this is empty, this will detect no signal, it will come to a stop ready to collect more fuel the next time. The XP, you've already seen how to get that. That's very, very simple. This lever just turns this line of redstone on or off, which in turn turns these redstone torches on or off to lock and unlock the hoppers. When they're locked, you can grab it. When it's not, you can't. So basically, once this hopper minecart starts going around the track, uh, once it's full, it will release this piston, thanks to this comparator here. Um, that will mean that the hopper minecart can then take off. At the same time, this will also send a signal through this part, of the back, section at the back here, down to the bottom, along here, and up here. And what this will do is to activate this redstone torch. The reason we need to do that is, as you can see at the moment, this rail is facing the wrong way. We want the hopper minecart to go to the left at this point. So when it releases, this rail then switches to go to the left and the hopper minecart can go round in the clockwise direction that it needs to go. Okay. This detector rail here works on the same circuit so if it detects that there is something in the hopper minecart, again, it will send a signal to that redstone torch we saw earlier, which will change the direction of this rail and send the hopper minecart on another trip round. If, on the other hand, it doesn't detect that there's something in the minecart, so if this comparator doesn't send a signal, nothing will happen. <laughs> and this will then allow the minecart to come back to its resting point right here. And there you have it. That is the Mount Lupus smelting facility. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you find it useful in using this to get all of your smelting jobs done. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the Mount Lupus community here on the Quarrycraft server, please consider subscribing as I will be making more videos as and when I have time. For now, goodbye everybody and see you the next time.